Hello and good afternoon, everyone. I am joined. Uh, I am Joe Briscoe. I am joined by Erica Randolph in our always a Blue Devil series. So, Erica, first off, how are you doing today? I am awesome. How are you? I am doing very well. It's a beautiful day out. I don't think our humidity has kicked in quite yet in Louisiana, which is always a big plus. So agreed. So we'll get right to our questions because we want to give you as much time as giant spotlight on yourself as we can. So first off, how, why did you decide to attend Dillard? Um, my grandmother actually is an alumni of Dillard University. And my mother is originally from New Orleans. Um, when I was uh, recruited by Mary Teamer, so I was a part of her last playing class, um, there was just something different about her. Um, and my parents felt like it was probably in my best interest to attend a, a smaller um, school and an HBCU. Um, they felt that I would get the attention that I need and that the, it would help my, um, my playing career. Um, I had other offers, but there was just something different about Dillard that you know, resonated with me. And I mean, I, I think I made an excellent decision. Oh, excellent. You know, it's a very good story. And you were part of, you know, the great Mary Teamer's last decree. Class, a last playing class, which is also a huge feather in your cap as well, because <laughs> Mary is in the, it will always be one of the historic figures in the, you know, the history of women's basketball, not only at Dillard, but in the, you know, the history of women's basketball. So that's amazing in, in itself. So, Absolutely. So um, talk a little bit about your experience when you were on campus, you know, like how, how was it, uh, you know, to be on campus, you know, what would you like, what you didn't like, that sort of thing. So. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, when I, being from California and coming to New Orleans, it was a huge culture shock for me. Um, everything was different. I didn't even really understand the language. So when people <laughs> were saying making groceries, I was very confused. My, um, my roommate at the time, my freshman year, she was also from Sacramento. So that kind of helped, um, helped me some, but my sophomore year, my roommate was from New Orleans. So she kind of helped me get acclimated a little bit with, uh, New Orleans, the lingo. I knew a little bit about the food because yeah. my mom was from New Orleans, but yeah. Like when they would say stuff like there's some in the cabinet or no, they got some in the cabinet. I, I would, I'm like, who is they? Are there people in the cabinet? I was confused. I didn't understand that. That was just a normal term for them to say. So uh, after a while, it's kind of hard to, it's kind of hard not to fall in love with New Orleans. For sure. It's, it's a great city. And, you know, I, I totally sympathize. I am originally not from New Orleans as well. And it took me a little while to at least understand what people were talking about. <laughs> Sometimes people slip into their accent. I'm like, can you repeat that a couple times? I feel bad, but right. I'm not quite, you know, up to par yet. So, <laughs> so um, talk to me about your classes um, or favorite teachers. Did you have a favorite class or teacher um, when you were going to school? I loved Miss Estevern. Um, she taught, um, so I was in biology. She taught, um, I think it was anatomy and physiology. Um, and and um, Dr. Mar no, uh, Marva Smith, she taught genetics. They were fantastic. Um, who else? I also had uh, maybe a Dr. Smith for history. Maybe I think that name sounds familiar to me. Um, I remember because the very first day I had class, she was going over her rules of procedures and she said she didn't like for people to chew gum, but I had gum in my mouth. So I tried to like hold it in the back of my mouth and she found out I was chewing gum and she put me out. But actually she ended up being my favorite, one of my favorite teachers. <laughs> that's, that's a great story too. <laughs> so um, have you had the chance to come back on campus over the years since you graduated or, you know, like- I, I absolutely have actually. Um, one of our um, track runners at the high school where I work, um, she actually has a, um, a track scholarship to Dillard. And um, a part of you know her making that decision was, um, I told her like, I, would, I wouldn't trade my HBCU experience um, for the world. And um, so I, I went with her to, on a campus visit. Of course, I didn't recognize a whole lot of places. <laughs> But, um, you know, there was still like Hartzell Hall and I was like, oh, I stayed at Hartzell Hall. And she's like, <laughs> she was just kind of looking at me. And I told her, I was like, the rules were a little different then. I was like, it, you know, there was no co-ed dorms. I was like, we had a curfew. We had to be in by 11. On the weekends, I think it was maybe one o'clock, two o'clock. So, I mean, it was, it was pretty strict. Hey, I mean, like, at least there wasn't any snow to go uphill on, right? Right. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, what years, and I'm, again, a lot of these questions are going to test your memory. So, like, what years did you end up, were you playing at Dillard? 95 through 99. 
95 to 99. Okay. Um, so, um, you know, since you left, are you, are, have you been able to keep up with a lot of your former teammates? And if so, like, how, how are you able to keep up with that? Um, I, I'm friends with the majority of my teammates on Facebook. Uh, a, a lot of my teammates I actually see uh, from time to time. A lot of them are actually in education. Um, some of them, like one of them, she is actually, well, she was a basketball coach in Baton Rouge. She coached um, girls. Um, but actually, I see quite a few of my former teammates. Excellent. You'd be surprised. Oh, for sure. I mean, the, <laughs> the connections that you make in college, how they're lifelong, especially, you know, like not only, I mean, it happens at a lot where in the educational field, but even without, I'm sure you've got plenty of teammates that or some teammates that weren't in the education that you're still able to keep up with. And Facebook is an amazing tool. But, uh, uh -huh. <laughs> Absolutely. I have two, two teammate, teammates that I actually see quite on, on a regular. I have some of them that have actually been to the games where I've coached that support me. So absolutely. Excellent. Excellent. So now we'll kind of get into, um, you know, like when and how did you first start playing basketball? Because I know basketball was your sport here, but, you know, how did you first start playing basketball? Um, my favorite basketball player was Magic Johnson. I decided that I was going to be the first girl in the NBA and nobody could ever tell me different. Um, I was actually um, a dual sport athlete. Well, technically um, dual sport for um, all the way up to eighth grade. I was mostly soccer and, um, and basketball. But when I got to high school, I had to make a decision. So I kind of stuck with basketball and then also with track. I had to leave soccer out. But soccer actually made me a better basketball player because it lowered my center of gravity. Of course, you don't use your hands as much in soccer. So I was a better defensive player. And I had to think a lot because soccer requires you to be able to make, uh, it's about angles and passing. So I was a better basketball player because of what soccer had taught me. Um, I was a I was a standout athlete when I was in um, high school, and I went to um, a very prestigious high school, it was St. Francis Girls High School, and that's where I got recruited. I had a, a really good high school career. Excellent, excellent. Um, so now we'll get into the meats and potatoes of the interview, and you know you are very unique and special, um, and you're a bit of a trailblazer as well. I mean, you're a female assistant on a boys varsity. A program, not only on, you know, a program, but a very successful program. So, you know, tell us about that. First off, tell us about that experience, how it came to be and, you know, like your feelings about being a, a trailblazer. <laughs> well, honestly, um, it wasn't like, uh, it wasn't really a choice. I, no one ever asked me, actually asked me to coach girls. That That's the strange thing. They knew I played basketball, um, but I was actually at East St. John with the coach there. And, and the coach was like, listen, he asked me to break down some film. And right after he asked me to break, break down the film and I broke it down, he said, uh, I need an assistant coach. Will you coach? <laughs> and I, was, I didn't even think of it. Didn't it didn't resonate in the back of my mind, boys. I was just thinking coaching. Yeah. So I was like, I would love to. But I had a, coaching was something I had avoided for so long just because I was tired of being in the gym. I had been in the gym the majority of my life. And yeah. I was like, I don't know if I really want to go back in the gym. But the gym has a particular smell to you. Like when you have played in the gym for a long time, when you walk in the gym, you're like, it's home. So the first, <laughs> and it, it is the first game that I ever coached by myself. I coached the, um, I coached, var I coached the varsity and the freshman and the JV, but the first game I ever coached by myself was the freshman. And there were things that I knew, like when to call timeouts, how, how to draw plays that instinctively came to me. And I had no explanation for how I was able to do it. I had no explanation for how I knew how to make adjustments. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, that's because you were a former player, but coaching is, is totally no. different than playing because you have to figure out in a minute time, sometimes 30 seconds, how to make your adjustment, how to communicate that quickly to your, to your players and have them have buy-in. Yeah. So my first year, I'm not going to lie, I struggled. <laughs> I, I'm not just, um, not just as a coach, but because of uh, other coaches, they um, thought I was the trainer. Um, the referees, like I would, I would call timeouts and the referees, I don't, I think that they just weren't used to hearing my voice. Yeah. So oftentimes I'm calling a timeout, they think it's a parent. So <laughs> I, I had, I did, I had to reflect. I said, well, how do I get their attention? So they understand. So the referees at first, my first year, they would be afraid to talk to me. Like I, I had a male assistant coach. They would just go talk to him instead. And I, I did not, I didn't take it personally. No. I just understood comfort zone. Yeah. Comfort zone is assuming that he was the head coach and I was just maybe the trainer or something on the side. So it, it took a little while for everybody else to all of a sudden get out of their comfort zone and to say, I think she's here to stay, guys. I don't think she's going anywhere. 
<laughs> that, that is an amazingly great story. And, you know, you were also very level-headed because, you know, as a head coach, I've dealt with a lot of head coaches in, in, throughout my career. And, you know, like, obviously you want that respect immediately. And, you know, you, and you had that respect, but, you know, instead of getting on the referees, you were calm and cool and it probably saved some tacticals as well. <laughs> I've only been teed up one time, one time. And that's, that's pretty impressive in five years. Exactly. Only one time. Exactly. Only once. And I'm, I'm sure the referees have earned more than that. So. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so obviously that is some of the challenges. Have you faced any other challenges? I mean, being in the unique position that you are? Um, some of the other challenges, I mean, I think is um, a lot of people like per perception about um, whether or not I'm as knowledgeable as my male counterparts. Um, I think oftentimes I'm, I'm more under, um, I, I, I face more scrutiny. I'm under, um, you know, a finer glass, a microscope. Um, and I'm also very careful about how I show my emotions on the court, which because I'm a woman, people are expecting me to be overly emotional. So a lot of times I make sure and I'm cognizant that I scale back some, but my personality is pretty laid back anyways, yeah. but I make sure that I'm careful how I display any kind of emotion, even when I call a timeout, I, I bring my guys in real close and I turn my back to the fans so they can't really see how the interaction takes place yeah. because you have to be careful, especially when you're coaching the younger kids. And when you're coaching with kids, you're in a small arena. Everybody can read your body language. They can read your lips. So I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm, I'm very conscious of that because there's this perception that women are just these overly emotional people when I'm yeah. like, actually the coach over there on that end is screaming way yeah. more than I am. <laughs> Well, I, I didn't even think about that. They, they, those are some great points. And you're a very deep thinker as well. You know, like where, you know, a lot of times coaches are just totally out of control and you're thinking about everything. You're thinking like three or four steps ahead, which is just, you know, credit to yourself and, you know, how, you know, even keel you are. So, you know, we'll talk Thank about- Thank you, I appreciate it. So like as a coach, there's always rewards. And I'm sure there's, you know, like just coaching any team, there's rewards. So talk about some of the rewards of being, you know, part of, you know, um, the high school. And not only are you guys, you're good. You guys are really good too. <laughs> we are. We are. Um, so um, I was at East St. John for one year. And then um, my head coach took a position at Hanville. And uh, one of the, um, I guess things he told Hanville was like, listen, I'm not coming here unless she comes with me. And I think they were like, what's so important about this assistant coach? Um, but in this four year time span that we've been at Hanville, um, we went from uh, nine and 21 to now one of the top teams in the state. Um, we had uh, one player that went division one to Charleston Southern. And then we also have two players who signed with, uh, with, with JUCOs because they wanna stay in, and develop a little bit more. Um, but that's a testimony to, to our, our program that in such a short amount of time, we went from a team that had no confidence and wasn't even making the playoffs all of a sudden being in the state tournament and being the final four, final four consecutively two years in a row. Um, I think what people, people um, don't understand, the X's and O's of basketball are, are important, don't get me wrong, but the building relationships with your players, like that's, that's the part right there. When um, I'm coaching and I see former players that have been um, under our program, even for the short amount of time that are, that are back as alumni giving back, that, that's what's important to me, that they have gained those lifelong lessons because it is bigger than just basketball. I want these young men to understand and I want them to have every opportunity that, that I have like I, I loved playing in college. It's a grind, but I, I want them to be able to have have just as much success as I had, if not more, so that they can understand like these are things that also will make you successful in life. It's tough. You're gonna have to work. However, like the the rewards are endless. Excellent. Another wonderful answer. So you know, I know also you know you are a teacher. So how do you go about balancing? You know, because, you know, just teaching enough is, you know, like when you're a teacher, you, your schedule is very busy, let alone any sort of family life coaching. So how do you balance it all? <laughs> I'm not sure how I do, <laughs> to be honest, because I, I'm a core teacher. I, I'm a biology teacher, which means it's a, it's a leap class. So it's a lot of pressure. But I, I truly believe, like, I, I walk this path of purpose. And I, I, I really know that in life, as long as you are flowing in purpose, everything 
manages to balance itself out. Um, I do have a lot of long nights because I do coach all three teams. So it's not like I'm just there for a varsity game and I go home. We have freshmen. I coach freshmen JV and varsity because that part of our program is why the varsity is successful. Yeah. But I, I just I do a really good job uh, managing my time. I have a family. I have two sons. So they spend a lot of time with, Jim with me, but everybody, everybody is, is, is committed and understanding like this is her purpose. This is what she's designed to do. So I, I just make sure there are some days that I'm ex like January and February, I'm extremely tired because that is district play. Um, that's when freshmen and JV are really playing a lot of games as well. Even December when we have a lot of tournament play, um, I'm tired during those months, but I, I make sure that I, I, I rest as well because your, your mental health is important in the longevity of coaching. For sure. And also longevity of teaching as well. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so I know also besides, you know, coaching at the high school, you also coach, I, I believe you mentioned summer league you're coaching as well. Um, yes. We have summer league. Summer league starts for us on Thursday. How'd you get involved with that? And are, you know, like, you know, is it still through the high school or is it a separate program or? It's still through the high school. So it's important for like, um, a part of our program and a part of a growth is, is summer league. So summer league basketball takes place for the month of June. So what we do is with the days we're not playing, we lift weights and we do conditioning. Um, we normally play on Mondays and Wednesdays, but basically it's kind of to give the guys a feel of some, some things that they probably wouldn't do in a regular game because the regular games have more pressure, but summer league is more freedom. It's, it's free play, but it's still some some control, like let's run some plays, let's see about execution, but we also get to see different combinations of players. So it's just the month of June. It's, it's really, I, I find Summer League very enjoying because the kids are relaxed. It's not a big deal if you if you know I'm going on a family vacation coach. It's, it's not a big deal. We, we understand that, but it's just really to give the kids something to do. And believe it or not, our guys in July are like, let's get in the gym again. I'm like, oh, no, I need a break. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you might <laughs> need, need a little bit of to... break. Your, your team yeah, I need a little like, break. Starting in August, at least give you a couple weeks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if they could be in the gym all day, they would be. Excellent. So um, you mentioned a little bit they have a family. So, you know, like, and you were from California. So, you know, you decided to stay in the state of Louisiana. So it really had a, got a hold on you, didn't it? So Yes, it did. Yes, it did. My husband is is right from New Orleans. Actually, one of my teammates introduced me to my husband. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's wonderful. So, <laughs> um, so, and you mentioned you're from originally California near Sacramento. What is Sacramento your um, original hometown or is it um, another uh, town in um it's actually Citrus Heights, um, which when I was living, and my parents still actually live in Citrus Heights. Citrus Heights is now a city, but at the time it was a county of, of Sacramento. Um, but yeah, that's where I, that's where I grew up. I'm so I'm actually, gonna ask you, go ahead. I'm going to ask you a question off that. So what was your favorite part about your hometown? When you're bragging about your hometown, what is something that you brag about? <laughs> no. <laughs> Nothing? Okay. Not, there is not, um, the weather in California is beautiful. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah the weather's beautiful so hey, that's 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 a good thing so all right um <laughs> we'll we'll ask you another question and these are kind of getting to know you questions but who are some people or that have inspired or continue to inspire you well that's an excellent question um there's a coach um that coaches for the university of maine her name is um Adnisha curry she um actually reached out like on instagram to me and she's like i think she there may be one other female um, male's assistant ba um, basketball coach, but I know that she's one, um, but I actually met her through social media. So, you know, whenever I, I post thing about our guy, she's always so supportive. Um, of course, um, Becky Hammond, um, I love what she does. Uh, Pat Summit, um, Coach Teamer, I'm, I'm, she was absolutely a trail. Listen, Coach Teamer was a trailblazer. Coach Teamer, every game was dressed to the nines. Oh, yeah. She made sure that we were um, presentable young women at all times. She um, she did an excellent job with recruiting. Um, and, you know, she she kind of marched to, her, to the beat of her own drum. She really did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Done some, did some research about her, you know, because we did, you know, we wanted to celebrate her uh, back in March and like, you know, things written about her were obviously she wanted to prepare everyone that, that played in her program, not just to play basketball, but, you know, prepare them for their next step in life, which is very big. And, you know, like that's forward thinking as well. So <laughs> she did. She made sure that that was one thing I appreciated about her. She 
like we couldn't wear our warm ups to school. So you know how they give you like the little um, like kind of jumpsuits that you get. Yeah. We could not wear those to school. We had uh, sweats, uh, also like practice sweats. We were not allowed to wear those to school. Like we actually had to get dressed up for game day. Um, and you're talking about this was in the 90s. So she was ahead of the game for how she wanted us to present ourselves. She would always tell us, yes, you play basketball, but you're young ladies first. Exactly. Yeah, it's a, you know, I read that, you know, she wanted to prepare for her, the, everyone that put, and even the way she recruited, like she recruited people, you know, with grad, she wanted people to graduate. That was her number one goal. You know, obviously she wanted to win because all coaches want to win. <laughs> you know, she wanted everyone to play for her program to be better off throughout their life. So, you know, she was very inspirational in that way. All right. Great. So let's see, this is going to be kind of, uh, you know, an easier question for you. Maybe it won't be, I don't know. <laughs> we'll talk about some of your favorites. Do you have a favorite movie? Yes. Um, probably Marvel Endgame. Okay, Marvel Endgame. Okay. <laughs> How about my favorite TV show? I know you probably don't have a whole lot of time to watch TV, but... Uh... I actually do watch a lot of TV. Um... Favorite TV show? Or show? Probably Scandal. It's probably my favorite. Oh, uh, yes, yes, that, it, it was very. It was very good one. <laughs> How about um musical artists or groups? Do you have any? Beyonce, Beyonce. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Beyonce. I I love rap music too. I, I love like Jay Z, the baby for the newer ones, Future. I love rap music, but uh, Beyonce. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Um, so, and this is going to be kick you all the way back. So, what was your first ever job? My first ever job, believe it or not, was McDonald's. Really? <laughs> I think and a lot I, of people start off there. So. Yes, and I knew. I was like, I cannot do this. <laughs> but, it, but it motivated you as well. I mean, it way. absolutely did. So, and <laughs> we all you can ask for is that first job because most of the time the first job isn't what you're going to do the rest of your life, but it motivates you or it gives, right. like you know another path you can go. <laughs> so, all right. Um, you seem like you're a very happy person. So, if I ask you, what is your personal key to happiness? What would it be? You have to love yourself. I think that. Um, you, you can't reciprocate love until you love yourself. And that doesn't mean loving all parts of yourself because you're always a work in progress. Um, but you, you can't properly, because coaching and teaching it is love. Um, you know, one of the things that a coach told us, told, told me one time, he was like, coach, your players play so hard for you. Like they'll run through a wall. And I'm like, my players know I love them. And I, I think the, the, my players also know, like, I, I love myself. I, and it's, it's not an ego thing. I, I, I love who I am. I love who I've become. So it's, it's, I find it very easy for me to love other people. Like it's reciprocated. And I think that a lot of people struggle with that. I think that they don't understand that you, you can't, you, you're not even able to receive love until you love yourself. Excellent answer. Excellent. So, all right. Obviously you play basketball, but you might have some hidden talents. Do you have any hidden talents you want to tell people about or anybody that, you know, you, you can do something that surprises somebody like, Oh, I didn't know you could do that. I play the piano. Really? How long have you played the piano for or how long? Well, I, I don't play that often, but I still have one here in my house. Um, but I used to play uh, classical piano when I was younger. So about the age of about eight to about 12, um, and then my parents kind of told me, like, Eric, you have to kind of make some decisions. You're at soccer one, yeah. one weekend, you're at basketball, then you go to track, and then you want to be in theater, and, and then you're playing piano, the piano. You have to make some decisions. And I said, oh, you, you're probably right. So I can still play the piano. I can hear music very well. So if I hear a song, I can normally go on there and, um, and play it. But it's not something I, I tell a lot of people. Well, that, that is, that is a wonderful. But I think also the fact that you kept busy as you know, a kid, I think that you know, specialization is never good. And the fact you were involved in a lot of different things and you were multifaceted where it wasn't just sports. You had, you know, interest in theater, interest in music. I think that, that makes you a more well-rounded person. It also helps, you know, form your life to, you know, you decide what you like and what you don't instead of just being specialized and whatnot. So, right, I agree, thank you. So, um, and this is gonna be like something you absolutely cannot live without. If, <laughs> something I can. 
oh, I can't live without my my family, like my integral family, like my husband and my kids. They're so funny. Like <laughs> um, everybody in my house is is completely different, um, but we work together in, in a unit. Um, my oldest son is is different. He likes anime. I have my younger son who is like an honor roll student, but likes 2K and, um, but he kind of plays sports, kind of does, it doesn't really take it seriously. And I have my husband who works in the restaurant industry, um, but I can't live without them. I, I think they, uh, they love being in the gym. Um, they think I'm funny when I coach, like they come home and they say, do you remember when you did this? And I'm like, no, I don't. Um, but yeah, I, I love my family. Excellent, excellent. And how about, um, you know, obviously you spend a lot of time in the gym. Do you ever get a chance to play like basketball in your free time or do you have an interest in no. basketball? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I have learned as I've gotten older and I've gotten to this age that I am that I do not want to risk injury. So okay. I will shoot around. I actually, I, when I was a junior um, playing for Dillard, I actually uh, tore my, my PCL and I, um, yeah, but I mean, I played my senior year, um, but I know as I get older, you're more prone to in injury. So I don't even take that chance. Like I'll, I'll shoot around and stuff like that. But as far as getting up and down the court, I work out in the gym, but I'm not yeah. getting up and down the court. No way. Smart, <laughs> smart decisions. Smart, yeah. <laughs> smart decisions. So obviously, you know, you're a teacher, um, your um, major was a bachelor of natural science. So how'd you decide to become a teacher? You know, that wasn't my first career choice, uh, to be honest. I went, um, after I, I graduated, I actually went to the restaurant business. Um, and I really loved doing that. I, I really love, I love food. Um, I love the arts of it. And then um, Katrina hit and I, I didn't have, like, we didn't know the restaurant business was going to come back in New Orleans. And I had had my son and I, I needed something that was a little bit more steady. So instead, I chose this alternate career path that were, where I was a manager enterprise rent a car. Worst experience, but it's okay. It, I, it taught me a lot. Yeah. But it also led me to teaching. And one day, um, the band director at, the, at East St. John High School came in and he, um, he actually kind of knew me. And he said, I, I don't know why you're here but we have a science teacher position open. And I was like, science teacher? And he was like, and you told me you used to play basketball, didn't you? He was like, I know that you used to play basketball for Dillard. He was like, you'd be an excellent coach. And I'm like, he doesn't even know me. But that, that was it. I, I, I decided one day, I went down there and I talked to the principal and that was all she wrote. Well, that, that is also a great story as well. <laughs> Because it, it, it really is a calling to be a teacher, especially, you know, like working in the LEAP program, and, you know, like you have to really, obviously you have patience uh, with, you know, being a teacher and also as a basketball coach, I'm trying to balance it all. I don't know how you do it. And as you said, uh, even with a family, your time management skills have to be at the top of the pyramid. And also like when you have time off, you have to value that so much. So my head coach understands when basketball season is over in May, and I had to tell the players because I think some coaches are just like, all right, we're done. Let's get back in the gym. I tell my players like, you know, basketball is great. Basketball is life, but there is life, the real thing. And a part of you uh, mentally being able to contribute more, you, you have to take a break. You have, there's other things in life that you need to enjoy. Like you have to de-stress that that's, that's for your mental health. I tell my players, mental health is very important. You have to take time away from the gym. There's nothing wrong with going home and watching basketball again, but you got to take some time for yourself. Excellent. Excellent. And I, I know that you kind of helped in the recruiting process for a track athlete this uh, past year. Um, but, you know, like if you're giving words of advice for anyone that maybe you don't personally know, if they're considering Dillard as a potential school to choose, like, what would you say? Um, if they were choosing for, for academics, I definitely think that a, a small school is the way to go because you get individualized attention. I think a lot of times when you go to some of the larger schools, um, you don't get that home type feeling. Um, for athletics, um, one of the most important conversations my parents had with me, um, they asked me if I wanted to play. And I thought that was a peculiar question for them to ask me. And I said, well, what do you mean? And they said, a lot of freshmen don't get playing time do you want to play? And I said, I do want to play. And I mean, because as a, as a freshman, yeah. you're not going to get on the court. Like it's, it's rare for freshmen to get on the court. And my parents told me, this is a small school. You're going to know the coach. You're going to know your teachers. And I, I think that you'll be able to get playing time your freshman year. Sure enough, I did not at first, not at first at all, but the second, by the second half, I was a starter as a freshman. 
However, if I would have made the decision to go somewhere else, Freshman year, I might not have played. Sophomore year, I might not have played. And that's the same conversation I have with my players. Do you want to play or are you okay with maybe sitting down for a year or two? And a lot of people don't realize that you could be the number one recruit in the nation. As a freshman, you may not play. Yeah. It, de- it depends on, on you and what you're looking for and what your, what your future goals were. And for me at the time when I was going to Dillard, the WNBA was just starting. Yeah. My parents knew what was important for me because overseas was still not a big market either. My parents knew a foundation of education was going to be more important than anything. Even if I thought I was going to the NBA, which <laughs> was not going to happen because a girl doesn't go to the NBA, but my parents knew the foundation of education was more important. But I, you know, a girl hasn't yet made it, but they potentially could. And I think it's, Oh, Candace Parker could go. <laughs> you, know, and, and you are breaking, you know, glass ceilings already. So like in your own way, you know, like maybe you didn't make the NBA, but you are doing some amazing things. Thank um, you so much. No problem. I appreciate you taking the time talking. I know you, you know, especially now that I know your schedule, how busy it is. So I appreciate you taking, you know, half hour of time to talk with us and kind of catch us up on everything in your life. So thank you very much. Thank, no, thank you guys for giving, thank you guys for giving me the platform. I, I, I appreciate it. Um, it's not that easy to get anywhere and talk about yourself, but what I really want, you know, any young girl to know, or just anybody, like whatever your purpose is, you got, you got to walk in it, regardless of how uncomfortable it feels and how other people may not understand it. Walking in your purpose is so important in life. Excellent. Excellent. It's great parting advice as well. So.